Hello to the wonderful Dynamics 360 fan power platform community. Today we are entering volume 4 of my YouTube series, Effective Strategies for Dynamics 360 fan marketing. What we are going to discuss in volume 4, we are going to talk about lead scoring models. I am Dipesh Somani, business applications MVP, MCT, author and co-founder here at Dynamicity. So I hope you are staying well, staying safe. Let's quickly get going guys. There are multiple ways to reach out to me and know about me. Learn with me on Dynamics 360 fan power platform. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel above me in the QR code or you can find power of D365. A lot of learning for Dynamics 360 fan power platform out there. If you are into the podcast space, like to listen to podcasts, you can scan the second QR code power advice. I've just completed season one recently. You are into blogging and reading blogs and learning through that medium. You can scan the QR code for my blog, follow it, dynamics of dynamicsrm.com. You can also reach out to me on LinkedIn for your professional networking or any queries you might have. And if you want to follow me on Twitter and see my tech tweets, reach me out on Twitter, MS Dynamics blog. So let me introduce you to the lead scoring model in Dynamics 365. The marketing organization or marketing department or a sales based organization or a sales department invests a lot of time in seeing which leads are more prone to get into a purchase mode or get into a formal process of sales with us. That's where lead scoring model works and helps us. If I only have 100 or few hundred leads, it is okay. I can still go with manual processing and I can depend on my salesperson, sales team, marketing teams, etc. But what if I have few thousand and there's a big teleprospecting that I'm doing in my organization? That's where lead scoring model comes into play. Behind me, you see some of the lead scoring models through Dynamics 365 marketing app. Each scoring model includes a sales ready threshold. And what can happen when a lead score processes this threshold? What can happen? It can get marked as sales ready automatically, which can then trigger events within Dynamics 365 for marketing, including advancing the lead where through some business process or altering the tele prospectors or salespersons to pick it up directly. And that kind of automation or business process automation is really useful for a sales and marketing organization. It really reduces the load on your sales and marketing teams. Next thing is where we can create, view and manage our lead scoring model. Behind me on the screen, you can see how a lead scoring model looks like. It's a rich graphical interface where you can design your lead scoring model, where you can view, edit and create your models. You can go to marketing under that lead management and there you have scoring models. You'll get a standard list where you can create, delete, search, sort or filter items in the list to get to your right scoring model. That means you can have multiple lead scoring models at a one given point. You can select any item in the list or you can click on new. In our demo today, we are going to see how to create one. Once you are creating a lead scoring model, you need to go to the summary tab and you need to maintain and create a descriptive name in the name field. You can see behind the screen, that is the summary tab on the form then you can select the entity target to account or contact, right? Those are the two options you got. What is your target entity? This setting establishes which type of lead the model will score on. Now some effective tips, which is very, very important when you score and you create a lead scoring model, right? You can have any number of lead scoring models as I previously told as well in this particular video. That means if you have several models, each lead will also have several scores. Now limit this amount of lead scoring models you might want to utilize. And how do you do that? Research with your marketing and sales teams to create more effective lead scoring models and limit the number that you want to create. And that will help you in your automation, right? And typically it is very useful to make both sales and marketing teams sit together in kinds of sessions to understand what will work out better for both in tandem. All right, let's quickly get into action now, guys. So where do I find my scoring models? You can look at them under marketing area, lead management grouping, and then you can see scoring models over here. So in scoring models, three samples have been provided by Microsoft. I highly recommend to look at them, behavioral, demographic score and firmographic. I'm going to open up firmographic. So when you open or create a new one, you'll get a design area like this, where you can mention conditions and actions. So here, if our account is premium, then I want to give a five point increase. So let's look at the condition really quickly. So if account equal to certain things, I'm going to give a five point increase. If it is from a certain industry, I'm going to give a 10 point increase from business services. I'm giving 10 points increase in this sample. In the summary tab, you can look at the target entity is contact. It could be account as well. And here is where the name is given. Now, what, do, what else you got? So you have the grading. So what do you do in the grading? In a grading, typically what we do is if a sales ready score is given, 
depending on that, you will decipher multiple grades. So grade one is from 15 to 100, grade B is from 0 to 40, and so forth. And sales ready score is seven. That means if it is above seven, then that's crossed the threshold and somebody can pick it up in the automation or the process automation. So I hope this quick thing is uh, useful to you. Thank you. Thank you for watching my video. See you next Thursday, Power 360 Fang as usual, guys. All the ways to connect with me on this particular screen.